Welcome to Gone Carnivore, Thailand. It's a cloudy morning this morning. Been out in the pool for two hours already. Stretching, exercising, feeling great. So, going carnivore in Thailand. I wanted to talk today about going carnivore and the cost of eating out in the United States, around the world. I don't think there's much difference no matter where you are. Now, I want to bring up some points. I listen to financial television a lot and McDonald's is struggling to try to come up with a $5 meal deal, which some people say is going to be like a double cheeseburger, small order of fries, uh, four chicken McNuggets, and a small drink for $5. Well, I want you to remember something. Do you remember when the ads on television everywhere was for Subway? $5 foot long. And They're back. Any foot long is a five dollar foot long when you buy two for a limited time. Subway, eat fresh. It's Subway. They show the people getting their big old foot long, filled with teriyaki chicken and all the veggies and on the fresh baked bread. It's lunchtime. Stop what you're doing and head to Subway, because right now you can get the Subway foot long sub of the day for just six dollars. A different featured footlong every day of the week, like the sweet onion chicken teriyaki on Monday and the Italian BMT on Thursday. Discover a new favorite every day of the week for just $6. It's the $6 footlong sub of the day. A great value from a better subway. $5 footlong at Subway. Now they're advertising, sometimes on the NASCAR races, Subway, get your six inch sub for six dollars. Probably the most depressing fast food news I've ever heard. Subway just came out with their six inch sub for six dollars. I don't know if y'all remember, it was quite a bit ago, but you used to be able to get 12 inches, also known as a foot, for five dollars. I hate repeating myself, but sandwiches are the most overpriced quick service food in existence. If you go to the gym, try to build muscle, stay far away from this place, go to Panda Express instead. Every time I go to a sandwich place, I'm infuriated as this guy crafts my sandwich in 30 seconds and then charges me $18 for a full sub. Like, bro, at least give me the illusion that it was hard to make. Like, you just made me feel like an idiot because I could have done that at home in the same amount of time. There are some macro-friendly options at Subway, but it's just not worth it to me anymore when the price is so outrageous. This isn't the worst Subway news to ever come out. I think Jared has to take that cake. What? Say that again. Subway, get your six-inch sub for $6. Steph Curry says that's a good deal. Well, wait a second here. What the fuck happened? $5 to $6, that's a 20% increase in price. Foot long to six inch sub, that's a 50% decrease in what they're giving you. So for half as much food, they're charging you 20% more money. And from what I can tell, they're still pretty freaking stingy on the teriyaki chicken. But what's causing this? Well, the U.S. dollar, for one, is broken. The money system in the world is broken. And the best thing that you can do is be very careful how you're spending your fiat currency, whether you're in Thailand or whether you're in the United States, and what you're buying for it. Now, I get some comments every once in a while from people who say, Carnival, oh my God, that's got to be expensive. Well, 
It can be. But then again, are you buying your steak through Kroger's? Where the farmer, he sells his cow to the commercial organization, Beef Packer. And of course, they take the cow and they butcher it and cut it up and send it off to various stores like Kroger who also mark it up and then sell it to you. And now you're paying $20 a pound for a ribeye. But if you found the farmer living somewhere near you and you saw that this guy had cows just out in the pasture that you were driving down the street somewhere and you just see some cows in the pasture. Why not pull that car over and figure out where the house is next to the pasture or where the barn is, see if you can find some people around and say, I noticed you're raising this beef here and it's eating grass. Where do you sell your beef to? Is there any way that you sell your beef directly to me? through a butcher shop or what have you. Now, I know when I was in Cincinnati, there used to be this place up in Liberty Township that they raised the cows and they had their little butcher shop and they chopped up the cows and that sort of thing. And then they sold them direct to the public. Now, both my Uncle Danny and my Uncle Bill when I was growing up, both of those were people who worked slaughtering cattle and butchering cattle. Now, my Uncle Bill, he worked at a place called Cleaner Packing. And he went down there and he skinned the cattle. That's what he did. Now, my Uncle Danny, though, he used to have this big truck and trailer. And in the trailer, he had an operation where he would go out to the farmer's fields. And the farmer would tell him what cows. Damn, I hate these bugs sometimes. Where'd he go? He'd go out to the farmer's field and the, and the farmer would say, I want these five cows butchered. And they would butcher these five cows. Anybody see that little bug wherever he is? Before he bites me. Anyway, they would, he would select the cows, p pull them into the trailer, kill them, skin them, uh, treat the hide with salt and that sort of stuff, and then give the hide to the, to the farmer most of the time. And then he cut that cow up into half cows and quarter quarter cows. And, and then he cut out the steaks and do the hamburger. And he spent all day there butchering that farmer's cattle. And uh, then the farmer could sell directly to the public or his friends. And that's not as prevalent today as it was a hundred years ago, but it still exists. So if you're going carnivore, my recommendation to you, if you want carnivore not to cost so much, and I'm gonna look you straight in the eye right now and tell you, I'm spending less money on food with this carnivore lifestyle than I was on food, buying so much fruit, vegetables, and processed foods to go along with meats, chicken, pork, fish, liver. Uh, when you add up, because remember, you were still buying pizzas, you were still buying beef. You still ate some chicken. You still ate pork. 
But on top of that, you had chicken with mashed potatoes and gravy and yellow corn or chicken with baked beans and mashed potatoes and gravy. Well, that canned baked beans costs a dollar or whatever. And the mashed potatoes, you bought potatoes, you mashed them up, you added milk and butter and, and garlic and whatever it was you make your mashed potatoes with. That costs money. Uh, going pure carnivore, I'm spending less money than I spent on eating a standard American sad diet. S-A-D, sad. Just saying that costs of food have went up. There's nothing we can do about that. But choosing what you eat, choosing foods high in protein and fat, and that fat makes you feel full and you'll actually eat less. There's a lot of times that Noel cook up a steak and I eat half of it and I'm just full. So I just tell her like I did last night, hey, put this half of the steak away. And she usually comes over and says one of two things. Okay. Or she says, I'll eat it. <laughs> Which a lot of times, that's exactly what it does. Because if I cut the steak open and I taste it, it melts in your mouth. I usually cut off one piece and let her taste it. And if it's a really good steak and I ask her to put it away and save it for later, she usually just says, I'll eat it. <laughs> That's all, folks.